the goats have invaded the pig pasture. They love new things. So you'll notice no pigs in the pig pasture. George is gone, uh, our, our oldest breeding boar, of course. And the three pigs that we have raised up for pork, we just took into the processor yesterday. And man, was it quite an experience. Uh, I had built this, what I called the, the little pig trap. So I had the fencing here and then right in this little gap, I had backed up the trailer and dropped the, uh, the tailgate on the trailer, so, or the ramp on the trail, wire ramp, so it was sitting down here. Uh, and I trained the pigs by feeding them in the trailer for a couple days, so they got used to it. And then I came out here Monday morning, I threw food in there, they went right up into the trailer, I closed the door, and was ready to go. However, over those two days, it poured rain almost for two days straight. And overnight, we had some big storms, and so this entire pasture flooded. And it was quite an experience getting that truck and trailer out of here. So we had to do a little four wheeling, but uh, we got the pigs to the processor and that was the result of two years of raising pigs for us. That was a result of uh, we purchased a breeding pair of American guinea hog pigs, piglets, uh, a boar and a sow, and we raised them up until they were of breeding age. We bred them together. We raised out uh, two litters uh, of piglets. We actually have a new litter that's in the barn right now, and then the uh, first litter we had, we sold off, um, what do we sell, five uh, piglets to recoup all of our feeding costs and cost to buy the pigs and all that stuff, so we, everything was paid for, and we, we kept three uh, pigs to raise up over the last year, year and a few months, uh, and now we've taken them in to, for meat. And so we, now we have, uh, well, we're picking up our, our, our bacon and, and hams and sausages and all those things here in a few days. And I'll take you guys along for that as well, see how much we got out of them and all that. But uh, so this is uh, a result of us raising pigs for actually over two years now. And uh, I just wanted, today I wanted to share a little bit about uh, the experience that we've had with raising pigs. Uh, and, and kind of the truth about raising pigs. What are the, you know, what are you really getting into if you're looking to get into it? Um, what, what are, what is the, <laughs> what's the, what's the reality of raising pigs? Because I feel like uh, I was fed a lot of fluff about pigs, especially this particular breed. And so I want to do a, a little bit of truth. I'm not trying to sell you on, on pigs today. I'm just sharing my opinion with, uh, with raising pigs and some of the, the pros and cons. So first, the, the breed that we chose uh, of pigs, we wanted to raise in a sustainable way. And so everything I'm talking about here is not commercially raising pigs, which, is, which I think is a completely different story. If you wanna get into raising pigs commercially, um, you know, buying feeder pigs, raising them out, and you know, taking them in, getting processed, selling the meat or whatever, you know, or just breeding them or whatever you wanna do, uh, that's a totally different kind of system. The system that we were setting up here was, was supposed to be a sustainable system of raising pigs where we wanted to raise them on pasture in their natural environment, in a wooded environment, just like we see behind me here, um, on their, as much of their natural food source as possible. We wanted to, to breed them out naturally um, and uh, let them live you know, as naturally as possible. So we, didn't, we don't clip eye teeth in this breed. It wasn't necessary at all. Um, you, you know, we don't dock tails, anything like that. Um, and we also don't pull or cut tusks off of, off of the boars. Um, that is their natural, uh, you know, they use those as tools out in the, in the pasture and they're, they're a defense mechanism. And so again, we want to raise these animals as naturally as possible. That was part of, of the system that we were setting up here with pigs. And so my experience with pigs is going to be specifically related to that style of raising pigs. Okay, so number one, the number one myth I think about these pig, pigs in particular or about any pig is uh, I read from a lot of people and even on the American guinea hog site that these pigs are great at forage and that they don't root the ground very much um, if they have access to pasture. That I found to be 100% completely false. Uh, we, have, we put one pig, Martha, our, our breeding sow, we put her out on a, a very good sized pasture, pretty much alone. I mean, she it was a few goats with her. And within like two months, she had completely wrecked that entire pasture. I mean, she, she flipped and turned that entire pasture into mud within two months, just by herself. 
and there was lots of grass out there before she got out there. And so that pasture has been completely wrecked for over a year now uh, from when we just let that one pig out there. Same thing happened with this a little area that I let those three pigs in. I let those three pigs in here for two days in this little area, and in one day this whole thing was went from grass to mud. Uh, they just tore this whole thing apart. And so one of the, the challenges of raising pigs, especially a pasture breed, is that if you want, if you have any other animals or you want to use those pastures for any other thing, you you really aren't going to be able to do that. My plan was to rotate these pigs through a pasture rotation. The pigs would go through, the goats would go through, the horses would go through, whatever we have, sheep or whatever, and they would all eat different things out of the pastures and, and those pastures would constantly be renewed. However, once you put a pig out in a pasture, that pasture is destroyed and then you need to wait a very long time before or reseed it, it you know or you just get a bunch of weeds that grow back up and then it's really no good for horses it'd be good for goats and so they, you know they really do destroy pastures and so that's one of the kind of myths um, about this particular breed that I thought they were going to graze more um, but they they did graze but they also they would just graze and root and graze and root and graze and root until there was no grass left now as an advantage um, these pigs were actually very clean surprisingly and I know a lot of pigs are like this but they, they they actually are the easiest to care for in the barn and over the winter and things like that because they uh, they mess all in one spot in the in the uh, in the stalls and if they have access to pasture generally they'll go right outside and mess outside and then come back in and, and they make little nests and stuff like that in, in the straw and one of the last things uh, on the on the negative side of raising pigs with the american guinea hogs in particular is i think these these pigs the reason we chose them is because they were a docile breed that was the the whole selling point of the american guinea hogs and i think that they are a docile breed compared to some other pigs um, and for a pig in general the idea that uh, you can trust these animals with your kids and that you know they just roll over and you can scratch their bellies and all these kinds of things I think is very dangerous um, I have been in I have been bitten by all of these pigs I've, I've been bitten by our sow Martha um, not to didn't cause any serious damage but if you get near her piglets or anything like that she's gonna come after you of course and literally as soon as you grab or touch one of those piglets and you're in there with her she will charge you in a heartbeat and she will bite you. And so you, you have to be very careful around any animal, especially pigs. Uh, same with the boar, obviously. I was in with George, our oldest boar, all the time, scratching his belly. We're, I, I mean, I, we've raised this pig since he was, he was this big. Uh, spent lots of time with this boar. But all it took was him being riled up by a boar, uh, at one of his sons actually, <laughs> in, a, in a neighboring pasture back here, um, he was he got riled up about that and you know it, it meant nothing for him to to kill me uh, it meant nothing for him to to seek me out and attack me I wasn't in his way I wasn't near him I, I wasn't you know in between him and the other boars I wasn't around or anything like that he he sought me out in the pasture that day uh, I was very far away from him and he ran to me and and literally attacked me behind my back when I when I wasn't facing him. So, um, you know, snuck up on me and attacked me so quickly that I couldn't even turn around to defend myself against him or scare him off or hit him or kick him or anything like that. Uh, and so the, the pigs are very dangerous. And, and we have to remember that pigs are, are the only animal that, that we raise here on the farm or that we could raise here on the farm that literally will eat you. <laughs> You know, if you if you fall into a pig pen and hit your head, if you are elderly, if you are a kid, you know, if one of my kids were to get in this pen and fall, have a, you know, something happen, whatever, the, George or Martha or any of these pigs, even the piglets, they will eat you. They will gnaw on you as soon as they draw blood. They will taste. They will eat. They will eat your entire body. Like, pigs are a dangerous animal, and we need to always remember that before we get into pigs. I, of course, knew that um, about these pigs. We've always been very cautious, but uh, one slip up and one, uh, one moment like that for me, it, and it almost cost me my leg or if not my life. And so, uh, you know, pigs are dangerous and we have to remember that no matter what breed and no matter how docile that breed is, there are always situations when pigs can be very dangerous. And so those are, that's the, 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 the truth and, and the, you know, some of the, the myths out there, I think with pigs, but on the other hand, pigs are a fairly good uh, protein source for a small homestead, and they can be raised sustainable if you have the setup to do so. Uh, I think one of the mistakes that we made here, you know, getting into pigs is that we're also breeding and selling goats. We also have horses, and we also have several breeding pairs of pigs. 
And when you start to think about all those animals with different dietary and pasture needs, uh, the amount of separations and, and separate pastures and separate, you know, feeding and watering and, and all these different things that need to crisscross and be multi-animal compatible and all that kind of stuff it became very complicated very quickly around here uh keeping boars separate from other boars keeping you know this this uh, sow separate from this uh, boar we can't have these ones breed with these ones and the same thing with the goats the males and the females and everybody has to be separate and you know it, it becomes very complicated and we really need you know eight to ten different pastures separated by electric fencing that's compatible with pigs and goats and horses which they all have different fencing needs and so raising pigs alongside other animals is very difficult now if you were just going to do pigs and do some kind of pig tractor or just raise pigs in, in two or three different pastures or something or barns it, it would be much easier and i think we got into a lot of different animals here that are very hard to raise together pigs and goats and horses are very hard to raise together uh, pigs just destroy everything and uh and then there's nothing left for the other animal seat <laughs> so it doesn't really it doesn't really work with that being said i am not here bashing raising pigs i'm not here bashing the american guinea hog breed but we will be phasing out of pigs for now um, we will be selling off the ones that we have we will be harvesting the rest for meat and uh packing that all away for food for us for uh, hopefully a long time and, and maybe selling and giving some way as well and we are going to be focusing on some other animals that are a little bit more compatible to raise together and uh, we uh, I will reveal maybe some future just ideas at this point they're not really plans uh, in another video of some things that we'd like to do but uh, we will continue to raise our goats and we have these horses that we rescued we'll continue to be raising them and uh, they are very compatible with each other as far as pastures go and so they should be pretty easy to uh to continue to to raise so the ssl family farm is getting out of the pig business and it's not just because one of our pigs almost killed me although that is a piece of it uh, it has uh, this has been something that has become very difficult for me even before that happened and uh, i was starting to get kind of frustrated with our pig operation um before that if we want to get back into pigs again i have a really great idea now of what exactly i need to have set up first and it might be something a little bit further away from the house and just designed for pigs specifically and not any other animals and so that might work uh, might work better than sharing pastures between animals and all that other stuff i know that there's going to be a lot of of controversy i know there's going to be a lot of uh, uh of ideas out there i'd love to hear from you guys i i, I want to hear all those ideas i don't uh, don't uh, turn any ideas away or thoughts or opinions. Uh, so throw that stuff down below. Of course, hit thumbs up if at least you found something informational. The truth about pigs, what do you think? Is it worth raising, not raising? And let's not even get into what the Bible says about pork. We could, we could have a whole discussion about that another time. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, the, the little uh, talk today um, about pigs. They're out of here for us. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Stay away.